Hello guys, a lot of things happened this week. Huge volatility in the market, California banning sales of new gas powered cars, companies starting their dividend payments and buybacks again. So today I am going to talk about all that and about the next week's earnings report and Palantir IPO and more. Please smash that like button and subscribe since it really helps my channel out. This was definitely a roller coaster week with a lot of volatility. Some days we were up more than 2% and the very next day down 3%. This was the fourth consecutive decline week for the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. I do expect this volatility to continue since we are still in a pandemic even though we have improved. Also elections are almost in a month and also because of the prospects of an uneven US economic recovery. Historically speaking, volatility in the stock market increases months before any elections since the markets hate uncertainty. According to this article, the market tends to perform better during a year in which a president is re-elected in compared to a new administration. As explained earlier, the market hates uncertainty. A new president can create more unknowns. The potential of increased regulations, higher taxes and other shifts the market perceived as anti-business can all influence sentiment. The other day, a member of the Discord group, which is completely free, linked down below in the description, asked if he should wait until election passes to start investing or if he should start investing right now. The answer to that depends on how you feel with investing and how patient you are with your money. My recommendation was to start investing right now, but to not spend all your money since we have a possibility of seeing lower prices after elections. But this is completely uncertain, meaning that me personally would invest little by little starting today and depending on what happens after elections, average down if necessary. For me, it's not worth trying to predict the future since literally no one knows what's going to happen. Now, one of the IPOs I talked about in my IPOs video was Palantir. Palantir is a software technology company specialized in big data analytics to help companies automate their processes. This company is expected to be valued at nearly $22 billion. Palantir's bankers have told investors that shares could start trading around $10 a piece. As I have mentioned before, you are able to invest in IPOs before they go public with Webull. Talking about Webull, you are able to get a free stock worth up to $1,600 as long as you deposit $100 when you open an account with them. The link for that is the first one in the description below. Now, Webull lets you invest in IPOs before they go public, so basically you can invest in their free IPOs. For example, you see here all the stocks are IPOs in which you could invest. For example, this one called Aiminomi Inc. will go public on October 2nd, and I'm able to order it right now if I would like to invest in them. With Palantir, we still do not have any date for the offering, which is really weird. I do know that people were not able to invest in Snowflake pre-IPO and do not know if that is going to happen with Palantir as well. But I will be refreshing this page since I like Palantir and I would like to invest in their pre-IPO with Webull. Again, the link for that is the first one in the description below. As the EV industry is really, really high right now, I thought that this was going to be even better news for all EV investors. California to ban sales of new gas power cars starting in 2035. This is not the first time we hear about this since there are some countries that have talked about it before. According to this, countries like Canada, Costa Rica, Germany, Spain and more already announced that they were going to ban sales of new gas cars by 2030 to 2040. Then there are other countries such as India, Norway and Netherlands that are banning all diesels and petrol vehicles. This is obviously huge for companies within the EV industry since it means that in about 10 to 20 years we are going to only see electric vehicles for sales and on the streets. Obviously this will force huge companies like Toyota and Honda to accelerate the transformation process and start improving their technology for electric vehicles. I think this is one of the reasons people are so hyped about the industry. We all used to say that that was going to be the future, but to be honest, I see it more as like the present. Don't know how it is in other states and other countries, but here in Miami, I see even more Teslas every day and also other electric vehicles from other brands. Talking about Tesla, I would assume that most of you already know everything mentioned in the battery day. Yes, their battery improvements are impressive, but I think that the most impressive thing will be the $25,000 car. Even more now that we are seeing states starting to ban gas cars. This means that people will start buying electric vehicles and right now they are expensive. We have the BMW i3 for $44,000, the Chevrolet Bolt EV for $36,000 and the Tesla Model 3 for $37,000. 
So Tesla is coming out with an electric vehicle of $25,000 is definitely a game changer for them since it could be one of the cheapest and good looking electric cars available. Talking about electric vehicle companies, Nikola's finance chief defends the business model. According to the article and the finance chief, nothing has changed within the company. They are telling investors that they should be focusing on the future of the company and what they are going to deliver instead of the recent allegations. We all saw Nikola's founder Trevor Milton who stepped down as CEO of the company saying that he wanted the focus of the company to be in the business and not on him. Which which yes could make sense what he says but the allegations were against the company and it falls struck. Yes they talk about Trevor as well but the most important thing for me was what they said about the company. Because of all this the stock has dropped more than 61% within 3 weeks. We all saw how different companies needed to cancel their buybacks and dividend payments to shareholders due to the pandemic. For all of us, a dividend payment makes a stock more attractive during times of market turbulence. Same happens with buybacks since that helps the stock price to continue with its uptrend. Obviously, the return of buybacks or dividend payments means that there is an improvement in the economy. What I want to say with all this is that there are some companies that even though have laid off employees and permanently cut jobs, are starting to pay dividends and do buybacks once again. Companies like Foot Locker, Gas, Darden Restaurants and more. Now, United Wholesale's mortgage goes public in the biggest SPAC deal ever. United Wholesale Mortgage is the biggest wholesale mortgage originator here in the US and it is merging with a SPAC or special purpose acquisition company in a deal that will give a company a valuation of $16 billion. These SPAC mergers deals have become very, very popular lately, huh? The transaction will induce United Wholesale Mortgage with up to $925 million, including $500 million from private place. We all saw rocket companies when they went public about a month ago with a traditional IPO process and their stock was up more than 70% and now it is only up more around 15% from their IPO price. Let me know in the comment section below if you invested in rocket companies and what you think about these mortgage companies. Now for my airline investors, American Airlines secures a 5.5 billion treasury loan and it could tap up to $2 billion more in October depending on how the US Treasury allocates the fund under the $25 billion loan for airlines. At the beginning, American Airlines were originally allocated less money but Delta and Southwest Airlines have already said that they do not intend to take their share of the package, meaning that other airlines have more possibility to secure more money if needed. Even though US passenger airlines traffic continues to rebound over historic lows because of the pandemic, traffic is still down 73% as of July and that is affecting a lot the company. Now last week we saw companies like Nike and Costco reporting earnings. First Costco, their total revenue grew 12% year over year. Their comparable sales were excellent as well. Their e-commerce grew 91%. The comparable sales here in the US grew 11%, 9.1% for Canada and 16.1% in other international markets. Then Nike. As I expected, their online sales massively increased since they jumped 82% year over year since the pandemic has helped them accelerate the growth of their e-commerce. What impressed me the most was that women apparel grew nearly 200% in comparison with the same quarter last year. Which obviously that is excellent for the company but very bad for our savings girls. You need to save money. Nike reported earnings of 95 cents per share and revenue of 10.59 billion dollars beating analyst expectations. Next week we have PepsiCo reporting earnings. We all know that PepsiCo is an excellent dividend stock. Analysts are expecting them to report a revenue growth of nearly 0.10% for the quarter and 1.20% for the whole year. They are also forecasting the stock to go as high as $156 per share and as low as $120 per share, which is 2.3% decrease from the current stock price within the next 12 months. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please smash that like button and subscribe since it really helps my channel out. Thank you and see you next time.